as we continue our uh, discussions on uh, aspects of love uh, for which we're taking your, your book The Unconditional Love is Appreciating Aspects of Life as our, as our guide because in this book you've listed uh, 63 uh, universal qualities of love that we all share and um, I know we're not going to do all of them um, but one of, one of the, the qualities I'd really like to pick out here is perfection because I kind of shudder when, when the idea of perfection comes along uh, it's almost as if the word perfection suggests perfectionist and you know with that kind of goes the word pedantic and, and people accuse me of being pedantic and you know wanting perfection and you know it sounds a bit disparaging really uh, I don't mind if people say Philip you're so perfect I mean that's you know that's all right but I'd like to know what you what you're saying about perfection because it's not going to be either of those things I'm sure so uh, let's make a start by uh, I'll read the the three paragraphs that you're writing about perfection and, and see what you have to say within the heart of us sorry within the heart of each of us is a blueprint of perfection from the original cell to the subsequent form we occupy this image of perfection awaits in our consciousness to reveal our potential by choosing unconditionally loving thoughts and feelings we come ever closer to this wondrous expression the human personality frequently scorns perfection as unattainable you're right there yet as simply as we breathe we can share our unconditional love and become the very nature of this perfection at the center of every creation is the example of perfection waiting to manifest. Unconditional love is perfection. In truth, we never leave the state of perfection except in our minds and feelings, for all things exist in this state naturally. Very nice. So we're in a natural state of perfection. Oh, I need I need some explanation from you. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you. Yes, well, yes, uh, and in the sense that just as unconditional love is always within us, at the very center core of our being, we are unconditional love. We've just layered uh, many different belief systems and and shall we just say those heavy coats we've referenced before that kind of keep us from recognizing, embracing, and and sharing that unconditional love that we are, that level of perfection is in unconditional love at our core of our being. And yet, if you go all the way out to where we are at this particular moment, there's perfection in this moment also. We have an interesting journey on this planet in our 3D world where we tend to look outside of ourselves for all of our experiences. Uh, we react to things. We, we compare ourselves, we judge ourselves, we have experiences literally in the outer fringes when, when we're not necessarily connected to that core sense of unconditional love within. So if we can reconnect to the unconditional love, if we can reconnect to that core perfection that is always with us, we radiate, we become, we connect, we share, we, we embody more of that understanding of perfection. And I think herein lies kind of the difference with what you were saying about, you know, that perfection being taken by our human personality, by our outer ego, by our, our judging self, by our criticizing self, by our comparing self and wanting to be perfectionists in an outer sense. In other words, we want to be perfect according to what we think everybody else thinks is perfect which is like night and day to this understanding of the perfection that's already within us, mm -hmm. which leads us to the next piece of this understanding. And again, with all of these qualities, we're kind of dissecting qualities from unconditional love to better understand unconditional love by understanding more of these qualities, embodying more of these qualities, we actually create more wholeness. So perfection synonymous with unconditional love when understood what universal perfection is. The 
probably the quickest metaphor that I think we can all relate to is the seed or the acorn. You know, in that seed, in that acorn is all the potential of a mighty oak or all the potential of a beautiful flower. Mm -hmm. And in that acorn state, in that seed state, is all that perfection, that which it can and will become at some point. So would we say that the mighty oak is somehow different or less perfect or more perfect than the acorn when mm -hmm. they were both of the same and they both needed to be there in their stages of growth and development? We too, as infants, have enormous potential and who we are as adults is an embodiment of all that potential and all that unrealized potential. And when we can start looking at some of these bigger, broader symbolisms, we can better understand how we kind of diverge away from the memory, the recalling, the understanding that there's perfection in this moment. Because we again have built ourselves into this tendency through suggestions, through learnings, through environment, through experiences, through judgments, through traditions, through cultures. I mean, through all these myriad ways of constantly looking externally for proof and validation of who we are that already exists internally. We move kind of out of our center of being, out of our core being, and we start projecting kind of a persona of what we think perfection is you know, a perfect physical body, a perfect mind, a perfect career, a perfect relationship. All of these are constructs of the personality, all these combinations, constructs, not just of the mind projection, but literally, you know, what we think we need to feel to be more worthy. You know, it's a mind feeling kind of combination. And then what happens is we become, you know, our own inner critic, we, we so compare ourselves to the outer world that we forget that in this moment right here right now is all the same potential all the perfection in fact there is the seed and the acorn there is the original self that has all this potential and in this moment if we can tap into it by releasing all of these outer fluvia all these outer suggestions all these outer um, creations that we've we've brought into our world then we will be more apt to be unconditional love, be more of who we are, we'll be more of our own truth, we will follow our own heart, we will beat to our own drum, we will manifest our mighty oak, we will manifest our beautiful flower, we will be more of who we came here to be. It all, again, as we've said so many times, it all resides in this moment, because we can also take this moment and say that no matter what we got or what we did and how we got here was perfect in its own right because it actually has helped set the stage for us to actually acknowledge the love that we are. So perhaps in a, in a very difficult traumatic event in our life, a very strong, uh, challenging experience that we've had, that experience actually can set the stage for us to better understand who we are. So just as a acorn would have to break out of its shell, would have to grow roots, it would have to grow up. I mean, there would be a tremendous amount of chaos for that acorn to turn into a mighty oak. And it would have to weather, literally, you know, symbolically weather, and all the other environmental impacts over a duration to become a mighty oak. That's when you start to realize that there is perfection in the original blueprint, and we're always perfecting ourselves. In other words, just as that acorn becomes the mighty oak, it becomes something more. We're here to become something more. Our greatest difficulty is this externalization of all of these potentials and qualities by comparing ourselves to other people and literally taking on other people's ideas of potential or lack thereof, which is more often the case, and embodying them and saying, well, that must be what I should strive for. Never realizing that if you turn within, and you recognize your own perfection, that everything that makes up who you are right here and right now is perfect. In other words, the thoughts and feelings, the dreams and hopes and desires that we had helped create the path that brought us to here. Mm -hmm. Now, in a more conscious moment like now, we have the opportunity to actually say, is this really what I continue to choose to dream and hope for myself? Is this my highest potential? 
And that's where we bring in more of a conscious awareness, where we become more internal in our focus and understanding and less concerned about the external environments around us. This is how perfection very easily and obviously is a quality of love, not one that people would typically think of, and yet made more practical and understood, then we can actually, interestingly enough, embrace ourselves more. We can accept ourselves more. We can forgive ourselves more. Because in fact, we're recognizing the core essence of all of our potentials rather than limiting ourselves to the things that we thought we should have become or things we thought we didn't become or things we don't think we are or will never become. You know, those are all limitations. Those are all the things that actually keep us from becoming the mighty oak or becoming the beautiful flower. Perfection is actually a beautiful way to acknowledge this grander, broader picture that we keep talking about in all these qualities and aspects of love. Mm -hmm. would, I, would I be right in, in thinking that uh, whereas uh, most of the qualities you, you describe in your book are qualities which we can cultivate and by cultivating them unconditional love will grow in our experience but with perfection that's something that really comes from the realization of the unconditional love which is there so it's not really a case of having to cultivate perfection perhaps recognizing that uh, at every moment perfection is there whether it's in a in potential or we might say well despite everything that's going on in my life it's all perfect because it's all part of the process in that sense yes it it, it is absolutely much more of a recognition and i think you know unlike you know many of the or like many of these qualities love and unlike what we're generally uh, you know, conditioned to understand, people don't generally look at perfection in the ways we've just discussed. Perfection is, is you know, dotting an I and crossing a T according to some standard. Very different than what we're talking about is the, the universal divine blueprint. And, you know, on a cellular level, we often talk about the scientific aspect of DNA as holding the blueprint of all of our potential. I mean, consider the fact, the, the simple fact that we start out as a single cell, <laughs> you know, and yet here we are trillions of cells doing, you know, trillions of functions right this very moment. It's absolutely astounding. Mm -hmm. What was in that original cell, that original seed idea, that original imaginative potential was all of us, all of the things we could become, all of the things we are today, all of the things we will yet be, and all the things we've been. To understand perfection in that broader sense is truly to recognize that universal blueprint, that universal wisdom, that universal potential, where we could say maybe somewhat as a footnote, you know, you don't really cultivate perfection in this sense so much as you become perfection. The cultivation perhaps would be the constant reminder when we forget that central core blueprint, that, that potential. You know, every time we can catch ourselves, you know, limiting ourselves, and I can't do this or I can't do that, um, or this, you know, happened to me and therefore, you know, I'll never be able to do that. Every time we can take a deep breath in that moment and say, okay, that's what got me here. There's still a bigger picture. There's a bigger, broader plan, blueprint, um, map, roadway, you know, all, all these, these symbols, metaphors that we use there's more of me than just this particular experience that I seem to be dwelling upon. Mm -hmm. If we can remember that grand perfection, that will instantly disconnect us from the negative and it will reconnect us to the positive. So mm -hmm. again, as somewhat as a footnote, you can cultivate perfection mm -hmm. in the sense that you keep remembering it and therefore you keep growing it and expanding it. That's how we would bring it more, but yes, it is an innate aspect of us. Yeah, I can understand that then. So where uh, one cultivates the, the understanding that one's life is already a state of a process of perfection and that perfection is uh, intrinsic within it, that's part of, the, a part of what um, then cultivates unconditional love or releases the potential. That's, that's there within, which is that unconditional love. 
and it allows us to be more present in the moment. And you know, that obviously is a theme in all of these qualities we've been discussing is the present moment. Mm -hmm. Most people are not in the present moment because they're either contemplating something of the past or they're imagining something of the future. Generally, either side of that linear equation is fear or doubt. Mm -hmm. And so while we're contemplating fear and doubt of something we thought happened yesterday, which may or may not have happened quite the way we remembered it, or so long as we're fearing something or doubting something of the future, which may or may never come to pass, we are usually completely out of the present moment. And therefore not connected to self, therefore not connected to the natural perfection. And one of the beauties of not only do we have this understanding of in this present moment is all the unconditional love, the self-acceptance, acceptance of everything around us, the understanding of this universal blueprint, this universal perfection, this universal potential also means that in this present moment, when we disconnect from the past and the future, we remember that there's a solution, which that's one of the values of being in the present moment is because in the present moment, taking a deep breath and relaxing and accepting who we are right where we are, that allows new ideas to emerge because we're no longer dwelling on the past and projecting that into the future. We're no longer looking at the future and thinking that somehow that will become part of our past. We're literally just opening up and evolving and becoming the potential that we are really here destined to become. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, certainly to go back to your original reference, I think you, you better understand, we both share that, you know, that pathway of perfectionism, you know, that, that externalization of what we think is, you know, perfect. Um, based on, as we now probably better understand, this externalization of judgment and, and comparison and contrast and, you know, these, these outer modalities, these outer uh, conditioned views that we've taken on to establish what we perceive is greater perfection. Mm -hmm. Certainly over the years, as I've consciously gone in and you know, made unconditional love something that I really have wanted to understand. Perfection being one of those things was truly a quality in in the perfectionism state that I learned to transmute, overcome, you know, forgive myself, forgive all these circumstances, forgive all these judgments, forgive all these externalizations to better understand who I am and to better be in the presence of this moment taking full advantage to the best of my ability in this moment, knowing that perfection perfecting itself, you know, somewhat of an odd phrase that people don't tend to think of. And yet all the thoughts, feelings that I've put out there in the world have come to roost as my physical manifestation now. So if I can accept and embrace everything that's around me and in me right now, then I'm going to be in an accepting state and a more empowered state for the next thoughts and feelings that I put out that will be in greater alignment with that which I truly desire. Mm -hmm. So it changes the reference point from an outer experience to an inner experience. Now I choose to create in ways that says, oh, this is what I'm creating right here, right now, this way. It may be very different tomorrow or the day after, and yet I embrace what I'm creating right now because it's a combination of what I've already put into motion coupled with what I'm putting into motion right now. And all of it is perfect in its own right. You know, the acorn that dropped off of the oak tree was perfect in its own right. Now it's an acorn that is breaking apart and going deep down into the ground to become another oak tree. That's perfect in its own right as it grows roots and as it grows branches and it so weathers the environmental conditions, it's all perfect. Then it becomes a mature oak. And at some point it will no longer be a mature oak. It will have dropped its own acorns and it's moved on to the next expression of another acorn. Mm -hmm. So that's this universal flow, this, this natural synergistic circle of life perfection. And the more we can rest in it, and be okay with just who we are right now and not be so critical, so judgmental, so blaming, so justifying, so resentful, you know, all these things that we tend to, to do when we don't like what we have created. We just simply let it go and say, 
it's all good right here and right now. Mm. Then goodness will be the next thing in the next moment because we've just established goodness now. We've no longer entertained fear and doubt in this moment. We've let it go. Now we've said, okay, it's good. Well, then the next moment's good. That means we're going to create more good because we've established, you know, a new rhythm, a new, you know, new way of approaching life. Mm-hmm. Well, I know that we should never stretch uh, metaphors too far, but of course we're we're not an acorn and we're not going to grow into a, an oak tree, and we don't really know what we're going to grow into in the way that an, an acorn mm. somehow does know. Um, so. How, how would we grow into what, what our potential is to be? I mean, is this, is this a matter of being present in the moment now and letting the, the perfection unfold without well, trying you know, to steer it? You know, I have a bias in this, so I, I'm going to say that our greatest purpose is to embody love. Mm-hmm. So from my standpoint, it's less about the physical things we do and the physical things we become or the mental and emotional things we become and more about the collective whole of embodying and sharing and radiating and being unconditional love. Because in that sense, it doesn't matter whether we're picking up a hammer or picking up a pencil as our next activity. When we're embodying love as a conscious awareness, whatever we create comes from greater love and therefore will be more perfect. So whether we become a surgeon or a ditch digger, it doesn't matter. If we're bringing more love, we are serving a greater whole. We are providing service in a way that not only adds to the environment, adds to the very nature that we're touching around us, but it's also expressing itself amongst our fellow human companions on our journey. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in this case, does it really matter what we would typically label our potential you know, to be an educator, to be, you know, a warmonger, you know, it's like the potential is greater in the sense that we have love at our core essence. And that expression of love will naturally guide us to our greatest potential. So, you know, a carpenter may become a surgeon and a surgeon may become an artist when we come from that heart center. And that would be what I would say. And that's simply my opinion, my perspective based on my journey is that the expression of greater and greater love for self and all that around us is really the the pinnacle of the purpose of why we would be here. Mm. And in that way, we would manifest the perfection that you're talking about. And in a way, if we kind of go back to our, our, our used metaphor of the acorn and the oak tree, that oak tree is providing something in nature which is extraordinarily important it affects us because it provides a system that allows us to breathe, you know, gives us air and recycles things. I mean, it, it in its own right, as we've said in other shows, you know, where we've talked about uh, the simple life-giving effects of the sun, it's done universally and unconditionally. So too does a tree give of itself in so many ways to help the system recycle, cycle and recycle. So too, perhaps, are we here to be part of that system in our own way maybe a bit more conscious and maybe a bit more capable of doing a myriad of multiple things because we can certainly move about unlike an oak tree. Uh, but the essence really understood is the same. There's unconditional love in all of it. Mm. And that is really why I consider unconditional love to be that part of us that is most valuable to cultivate every step of the way. Mm. Yeah, lovely. All right. Thank you very much, Harold. Pleasure.